in this lecture I am going to tell you about more about TTT cups. In the last class I have just introduced the subject TTT. Let me again tell the three T's in this. Okay, most of the time students even do not able to tell what are the meanings of each. First T trans trans transport time, second T transport temperature and third T is transport transport transformation. And the way we plot, basically it should be a three dimension plot, but we do not do that in, in material science or metallurgy. We plot a two dimensional plot between time and temperature, time and temperature and this is suppose A1 temperature, then I plot inverted C curves. So, this is 1 percent transformation, this is 99 percent transformation, just like that. This is what it looks like. So, First, I have to discuss how I get this curve, then I will discuss what is the way to be understood, we can get out of it. You know, suppose let us consider the, uh, you know, here, you know, transformation is basically depends on nucleation and growth, as I told you. This transformation T, T transform transformation, it depends on nucleation or it is a function of nucleation and growth or I transform nucleation rate and U transform transport the growth rate. Transformation or this can be the percentage trans x is transformation is nothing but function of I and U, correct. So, now uh, I we know that and I told you how it can happens in the class class. Now, you know real experimental technique how do I determine? So, what is done? Let us consider for the case of perlite, then I can make you understand better way. Let us consider that I have a steel sample which is above this A1 temperature, above the A1 temperature here somewhere, A1 is that perlite transformation temperature or 727 degree Celsius for the plane crown steel. So, if I cool this steel directly like this, okay some sort like this, then only I can start the transformation because transformation cannot happen at higher temperatures, higher temperature higher than A 1, it can only happen at temperature below that. Suppose I cool it like this very slowly and keep it at the temperature. So, if I keep it at the temperature, then what will happen? Slowly austenite will transform to perlite. Now, this is my time and this is the transformation, fraction transform x. and this is suppose perlite x p, I am plotting. As you know transformation for perlite transformation will not start immediately, it cannot start because it depends on nucleation, nucleation is will happen at a particular time. So, there is always a incubation period, always incubation period. Immediately transformation can happen only for martensites, I know we have I have told you martensite transformation happens at speed of sound. But both for perlite and benign transformation will not take start at immediately at 0 time, it will start at a finite time and this is what is known as incubation period. So, now as you keep it longer and longer and longer, fraction, fraction transformation will increase and it will look like this, correct, it will look like this, it is this just like a shaped curve. So, initially it will, in the percent transformation will increase slowly then it will increase faster, then it will saturate. So, that is what happened if you keep it longer in this temperature long, long time, this is what we will get. So, you may ask why like this? Well, this is the typical feature of any diffusion transformation. Any diffusion transformation which is happening because of the nucleation and growth, this is what typically happens and this has been documented in the literature. So, I do not have really time to why this nucleation and growth dominated transformation uh, the curve uh, will look like this. So, now I can I have done this, this is suppose at temperature T 1, I write at T 1, right. So, I can do it at temperature T 2, suppose I cool it like this, this is at T 2, okay. So, obviously, uh, x per light versus time at T 2 will be happening, so it will start at much earlier because you have cooled it down 
much lower temperature diving force will be larger, you have given more higher, higher under cooling. So, this will start and this will also be looking like this. So, what is the meaning of these curves? What I am getting? This is 0 percentage, this is 1 percentage and this is 99 percentage, right. Similarly, here also 0, 1, 99 percentage, correct. So, I can get at a particular temperature T1 or at a particular temperature T2, what is the time required for 0 percentage transformation or what is the time required for the start of the transformation, time required for 1 percent transformation, time required for maximum percentage. You can even tell time required for 50 percentage, right, it is possible. So, and you know how, how we get this uh, you know fraction transformation is basically done by uh, optical microscopy. I, I take the sample you know at different time duration and observe under optical microscope and then calculate the volume fraction of the paralytic phase forms by point counting method. Those of you who have no idea of point counting method, it is nothing but a statistical point counting method. You have a pointer which if it hits the paralyte, you say paralyte is 1. If it hits austenite, it will say austenite is 1, paralyte is 0, okay, that is how. But it is like a point counting with a 0 and 1. So, it, by that we can calculate that. Now, I can do this experiment for each temperature starting from this to even lower temperatures. So, I will have a large number of data, large, large number of data, okay. At each temperature, I will have this time dependent curves for pilot transformations. Similarly, I need to do for bainite because bainite transformation will not happen at such a high temperatures, it will happen at low temperature like 400, 350 or 200, 250 or 300 Celsius temperature. And obviously, I should also do for martensite, if I quench the steel directly from austenite temperature to this. So, martensite transformation will start at MS and it will end as MF, right, you can do that. So, I can actually do it, for martensite transformation there is no time effect, time is not a factor because the transformation happens athermally. So, I can only quench to different temperatures and then find out how much martensite is formed again by point counting method, correct. So, uh, these all are done, everything is everything is uh, done uh, for a particular steel compositions uh, by doing these experiments and then all the data are plotted in this uh, plot which I will do it right now for you and I will show you also. So, all these data are plotted on a particle time temperature plot and this is suppose your A 1 temperature, this is your A mesh temperature, this is your M f temperature, correct. Then you plot the way I have done. Correct. So, I think it is little wrong, let me just reduce it, otherwise I cannot show it the magnetic transformation. Okay. So, this is 1 percent, this is 99 percent and this is austenite, okay. this is uh, ferrite, austenite plus ferrite plus cementite obviously and this is perlite this is penite. So, uh, this is how it will be written and this will be austenite, gamma, oh sorry, I should not, I should use symbols, gamma plus alpha plus cementite, gamma metastable. This is how the curve will look like and this is log scale. But this is the temperature in degree Celsius. So, all this data which I told you how to generate it are used to plot this diagram. What this diagram has? This diagram has different zones. So, suppose this is my A 1 temperature. This is my A1 means the temperature above which gamma is stable, 
atemporal is below which gamma will transform into either uh, perlite or penite or martensite depending on what is the way I, uh, I, I possess the sample. And this is perturbable region of gamma that means if I cool it down below 1 gamma is should not exist right thermodynamically, but kinetically it will exist because transformation rates will be very low at uh, little, little lower than the A1 temperature. And this is a zone of perlite when all the gamma will transform into perlite this, this, this will come here and this is these are the two curves C separate curves okay. There are two C separate curves one with 1 percent uh, transformed cement uh, sorry perlite or 99 percent transformed perlite. So, in between we will have some amount of gamma will be retained that is why it is called gamma plus alpha plus Fe 3 C because alpha plus Fe 3 C is perlite. So, in between it will remain and then here the finite return is because I know parent transformation will happen if I cool quench the steel at about 350 400 Celsius temperature and keep it long at the temperature then I can form vanite. And if I quench the steel below MS temperature it will form martensites. Martensite will start at MS start temperature and will end at MF temperature. So, there are the different zones correct sometime you will find as a 50 percent uh, line will also be plotted. So, you can do that this is a 50 percent. So, that is how the diagram looks like. And this is how to be read. read. So, now uh, before I read this diagram, I will just go back to slides and show you some more things. So, as you see here, this is the plot on the on the uh, uh, things where I have made. So, you see here this is the incubation period, right, below which no transformation happened. And then it reaches 100 percent become a flat beyond certain time. In between, you have a uh, transformation that is how it looks like it is like a S separate cup correct. So, that is the typical feature of any diffusional transformation perlite benign to some extent, but martensite will not follow this martensite transformation does not depend on time it depends on the temperature ok. So, now uh, uh, so as I told you the transformation rate T dot will be looking like this which I told you the last class and what is this this is temperature versus rate ok rate is per unit time. So, now if I convert this diagram to you know temperature versus time that is what is done in this in the board. So, what will happen this curve will be inverted this is like C inverted C separate right it is like inverted C it is just like this correct inverted C. So, this will be like this that is what happens that is exactly done in a TTT curve in the in the board I have shown. So, if I know the nucleation and growth kinetics very well for poly transformations, then I know the transformation rate will be showing like this. Why it does it show like at very high temperatures under cooling is very low transformation rate will be slow because nucleation and growth rate will be low. At very low temperatures and, and under cooling is high dying force is high nucleation will be probably high, but diffusion is slow. So, growth rate will be slow. Only at intermediate temperatures both nucleation and growth will be very very fast or it, it will be quite substantial significant there only the transformation rate will be the maximum. That is correct like for the pyrite transformation in perlite transformation depends on the carbon diffusion basically predominantly and this carbon diffusion will be high at high temperatures low at low temperatures, but you know at high temperatures diving force will be low because under cooling is low. So, therefore, transformation rate will be low, but at lower temperature diving force may be high, but diffusion is slow. That is what intermediate temperature the transformation rate is maximum that is what is shown here transformation rate is maximum at that. This curve when I replot that is what I written replot temperatures versus time it will get converted that is what probably will be shown in the next plot yeah correct. This is what will be done. So, if I plot the temperature versus time ok yeah here it is correct. So, this plot will be converted into C separate curve converted from this to this if I change the x axis x axis was in the transformation rate case it was second inverse 1 here it is second. So, that is how actually mathematically transformation can go. So, and we can always have a plot because the transformation depends on temperature and time 
So, 1 percent the start, 99 percent the finish for a particular phase, suppose beta or whatever, seven tight. Correct. Now, let us discuss you know in detail about this curve. I have given you sufficient introduction. So, whatever time I have, I will discuss uh, this particular thing. Well, so as you see here, this is also first let us concentrate on the red things. As you see here, this is temperature versus time and I have plotted, uh, plotted A 1 temperature, A 1 here, this is the eutectoid transformation temperature, M A start, M 50 is what 50 percent martensite, M 90 is 90 percent martensite. Sometime you can do M F finish, okay. but normally martin transformation never gets finished as I told you, because of the strain inside it, return of strain it will be present always. That is why 90 percent is what most of the curves you will see. And this is temperature on the, on the, on the uh, in the Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit cells the scale. And these are the three curves, one the beginning, other one is end and 50 percent. As you see this A is basically transform austenite, okay, or you can write gamma, this is perlite and austenite, okay, this is as you see. Now, so this is what we will get. Now, how we can use this curve? On this curve, we can impose the cooling rate. How we can do that? Because this is temperature versus time curve. So, I can draw different lines and slope of each line will tell me the cooling rate. Am I right? So, let us consider the first this, this one which I have drawn here, very slow cooling rate. So, if I cool it very slow for above the A 1 or A E 1 temperature, okay. So, above the A E 1 temperature, this is A E 1 and I am writing A 1 always. So, let us do that A 1. A 1 temperature, I cool it down very slowly. What will happen? As the temperature, as the sample is cooled, 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 only at this temperature about 650, you can see here this is 650, right. Transformation to perlite will start because it will hit the beginning curve of perlite and then it will further transform and at a little lower temperature, 100 percent transformation in perlite will take place. As the diffusion is faster at high temperatures, perlite will be coarse and it will have a high, you know, low hardness, RC scale hardness is given 15. Similarly, if I have another cooling rate little faster, I will have fine perlites because I am cooling faster, correct. Now, this is what will happen for perlite transformation. You can have different cooling curves drawn on these things. If you cool it fast and bypass the nose of this 1 percent transformation curve, bypass this nose of this 1 percent beginning curve. What will happen? Perlite transformation will not take place. You have cooled fast enough, so the diffusion transformation will not happen. And then it will simply hit the MS start line and Martin transformation will happen. So, you know, I can always have a critical cooling rate calculated by the you know curve or by the line drawn, which will just touch the nose of the beginning curve. It is just like this. Okay. The slope of this curve which I have drawn, which has just touched the nose of this, you know, beginning curve is what is known as critical cooling rate or CCR, very important, because this is the cooling rate, which is one minimum cooling rate required to bypass the palytic transformation. So, you need cooling rate higher than this to form, to form matricides, okay, that is the basic idea. So, now that is fine. Now, to form benite, what you do? You just cool it fast enough so that you bypass the magnetic transformations and hold it about 450 or 500, 400 degree Celsius temperature long, long time. This is isothermal holding, I told you in a while in a bath, high temperature bath. So, there if you keep it long, it will form benite, correct. So, as you know lower and upper benite will have a higher hardness, but martensite will have a much higher hardness, it can have hardness of 64 even higher. So, that is how this diagram to be read, read about it. And it is very important that you have a hold on this diagram, because unless and until you understand the diagram very nicely, you cannot read it. For every steel in the world, such a diagram is prepared. And these diagrams are available in the book called Making, Shipping and Stitching of Steels by US Steel Corporation. In fact, all the physical metallurgy books will have these diagrams for many steels available. So, you know, many cases it is uh, very difficult to form martensites at a slower cooling rate, because you need to have a cooling rate higher than the critical cooling rate, right. So, that critical cooling rate may be very high, may be like quenching in water, 
but you know if you quench in water the steel sample temperature goes down from 950 to room temperature and that leads to cracking in the sample because of thermal stress not only stress generated by magnetic transformation but because of thermal stress. So in order to avoid that steel are alloyed, alloyed with some other alloying elements other than carbon like moly, titanium, aluminum, chromium, tungsten all kinds of things alloyed. The basic purpose of alloying is not only increase the solid solution strength, but also shift this nose to the right side. What will happen is shift the nose to the right side, that is what is shown in this diagram. If you shift the nose to the right side, the critical cooling rate will decrease. This was the earlier critical cooling rate and this is now the critical cooling rate. You can decide which is lower, which is higher. Obviously, alloy steel will require lower critical cooling rate as you have seen here. So that is the basic idea of another idea of alloying you know and idea of alloying is to form martensites at a lower critical cooling rate and if I form martensite at a lower critical cooling rate I can avoid the stress due to thermal effects, cracking due to thermal effects can be avoided very easily and this is uh, you know very critical that is why steels will contain manganese, steels will contain little bit of titanium, little bit of chromium, little bit of moly, very small amount maybe 0.5 or 0.2 percent manganese will be there in the steels because these are the elements which increase the hardenability of the steel. Hardenability means ability to form martensite. that is what normally observed in case of steels that this is why this is the reason that most of the C curve shifted to the right side or shifted to the high time. In this curve I have been given the time scale, you see time scale starts from 10 to the power minus 4 second to 10 to the power plus 4 second, 10 to the minus 4 second is nothing but a fraction even less than a millisecond, but 10 to the power 4 is couple of hours okay, 13, 3600 is 1 hour, 36 seconds, so 10,000 is about 3 hours or 2 and a half an hours or so. So you can cool it and you know this curve hits about 10 to the power 3, so you can cool it something like in a 1 hour time you can cool the sample. So therefore the sample which is containing alloy can be you know can be hardened or mountain that can form by simply air cooling, you do not need to quench in water that is the message you can take it for me. So the idea is that and uh, this is the uh, point, uh, typical TT diagram for 0.2 percent carbon steel again the things are all similar you have seen the button, button, martensite, perlite, austenite everything is written and now after my lecture you can go back to book, you can go back to internet literature you can find out these curves and start reading, start understanding these diagrams because this is very vital for you to understand and to read. So although it is a course on phase diagram but you know I am discussing all these things because this is a very integral part of steel metallurgy in the, in the country like India where lot of steels are produced. So uh, whatever is uh, done by I will carry over whatever remaining for the 3D diagram and in the next lecture I will start the cast iron which is also very important uh, material and we will have about 3 to 4 lectures on cast iron for detailed discussions, different type of cast iron, how they deform, what are the way of controlling that, we will discuss about that. Thank you.